2019 is the year I pledged to play through the Castlevania franchise and record my journey through these vlogs, culminating in one big video review at the end. Here is entry 3 where I share my thoughts of Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. Welcome back to another Castlevania Diaries. Today let's talk about a very controversial game, Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. Now this game I've heard a long time about. Uh, in fact, it's when I first started watching The Angry Video Game Nerd that I first even really was aware of the whole Castlevania phenomenon. And Simon's Quest, as we all know, got a huge reputation on the internet for being a terrible game thanks to The Angry Video Game Nerd. And in fact, I would say his coverage of that game made me want to avoid playing the Castlevania series. Like that just kind of sealed it for me. I'm like, I don't need to play this game. So when it came time to take on this challenge of playing all the Castlevania games, I was not looking forward to Castlevania 2. And a lot of you guys even told me, like, oh, this is going to be a bad one, play the first one. And then people were saying, play the third one after the first one. So I had played Castlevania 1. Uh, I had beaten 3, but I hadn't uh, done everything. So another video on Castlevania 3 coming after this one. And I had done Castlevania Adventures on Game Boy. So going into Castlevania 2, my expectations were low. I was like, this is going to be the worst of the worst. Let's just plow through this so I can get to the 16-bit stuff. And lo and behold, it's not that bad. Now, I know that's sacrilege. Uh, most people will, you know, uh, pitchfork and torch this place down saying that Castlevania 2 to this day is the worst game. Uh, but I have to disagree. And I know that there's some of you, as I was streaming this, uh, some of you agreed with me that it is a good game. It's it's very different. It's vastly different. And you have to take it in consideration. I'm playing this game in 2019, which is a very different experience than playing it in the late 80s, early 90s, when we didn't have the internet to help us with walkthroughs. And we didn't have the whole rest of the Castlevania franchise to... Um, to really appreciate and understand how Castlevania 2 set some pillars of foundation for other Castlevania games, more of the Metroidvania genre like Symphony of the Night. Uh, so some things that, you know, there, there are some good things. I'll start off by saying the difficulty in it is vastly different. So in Castlevania 1 and 3, for example, I was dying a lot because of just enemy placement and the limited rigid movement of the Belmonts in those games. In Simon's Quest, I felt that the movement was a little bit more flexible and the combat was a lot easier. Like there was a lot more enemies. I don't know if there was a lot more enemies on screen, but I felt that the enemies on screen were more manageable. So fighting was actually fun. And the fact that when the more you killed, the more XP you got, like that was a rewarding feature. And I know some, especially the angry video game nerd, uh, describes that as grindy, but I kind of liked it. I, I preferred that kind of combat over the Castlevania 1 and 3 combat. And I felt that in Simon's Quest, you know, everything is more horizontal. And I absolutely hate the vertical levels of Castlevania. It's terrible. Like when you're stuck in the stairs, you're like up and down, up and down. And he's just like constipated his way up and down. And it's just like, you can't move. You can't jump. And then there's a stupid Medusa head or a flying monkey and it just kills you. Oh, that's so aggravating. But in Simon's Quest, th that's really, really limited just to like these mansions. And there's not that much. So that frustration is gone. I love the fact that you can actually level up and then that lets you deal more damage to enemies and that lets you also um, uh, receive less damage. I also love that there are actual upgrades to the whip, permanent upgrades, so that gave me even more motivation to go out and kill enemies so that I could get a bit better whip uh, so that I could make the game a little bit easier for myself. That aspect of it, I loved. Now I hear you and I understand that this game is cryptic as hell and that's not fun. And to be honest, remembering how I used to play game in the games in the 90s, I'm not sure I would have hated it that much. I do understand that the game is super cryptic and you know, I did do it with a walkthrough. So uh, yeah, call me out on that. But um, there are enough puzzle elements that, you know, back in those days, uh, you didn't like myself anyways, I didn't get a lot of games per year. So if I would have gone Castlevania 2, this would have been a game. I wouldn't have mind spending a few hours at a time. And the fact that the more you dig, the more you can uncover like these uh, secret scrolls that actually give you hints in the game and kind of guide you. Now, I don't know how thorough those guys are and if you can actually 
uh, beat the game just on that alone. I know some people were actually like drawing maps back when they were kids to figure this out, but that level of cryptic I think would have interested me to a certain extent. Now, if you did need to get a magazine to beat this, then yeah, that's BS and not as fun. Yeah, so the puzzles are definitely the worst part of the game. They're pretty shit. But now I remember the AVGN was saying, um, and a lot of people complain about those blocks, the blocks that you can fall through and how there's no way to know if you have an invisible block or not, unless you throw like these potions. And I used to, when I saw those videos, I was like, wow, that's a really shitty mechanic. But honestly, when I played it, I realized those blocks are introduced pretty early on in the game and they're used throughout the game. So it's clearly a longevity mechanic made for you to screw up your path and start over. And I agree that, well, I agree, I, that, I recognize that's a really shitty way to pad your game, but back then, pretty much anything was on the table, and I've seen far shittier mechanics. So the fact that you have these unlimited potions, I didn't even realize that they were unlimited, so knowing that you have unlimited potions that you can just spam in these mansions to learn um, to avoid kind of uh, doubling back and having to redo a section, I'm completely okay with. Honestly, those blocks, when I fell through, I was like, ah, oh, the game got me, and then I had to go over again. It wasn't as bad as I expected. Um, so I know that's a big complaint in that game, which honestly, I don't care for it. I, I, didn't, I thought it was a fair way to increase the difficulty of the game. Speaking of difficulty though, um, so I already said that the enemies were f more fun to fight. I felt that the challenge was more fair there. The bosses, what was up with that? So, you know, Castlevania 1 and 3, I got destroyed by the bosses, especially in 3. We're going to be talking about that in the next entry. But holy shit, the bosses were so easy in Simon's Quest. It was, it was almost a little bit too far in the other direction. I remember uh, when I got all of the pieces and I was getting ready to go to... Um, uh, is it called Castlevania? Dragula's Castle, yeah, basically the, ba the the last boss, or the last level. I was like, all right, all right, I'm gonna journey through Castlevania, we're gonna fight the last boss, and you know, I cross this long bridge, no enemies. I enter Castlevania, no enemies. There's an orb, I hit it, credits roll. I was just like, what is going on? Where's the like really difficult boss? Where's, like th this game is missing something, and even in those mansions where you collect the parts of Dracula, I think, if I recall right, there's only one or two that have bosses in them. I'm pretty sure some were optional. So that I wasn't really a big fan of. Sure, it made the game easier, but like it was almost too easy and unrewarding. It was a really anticlimactic way to end the game, especially for a Castlevania game, based on what I'm learning from the Castlevania formula so far. Uh, so that was a big letdown. Um, the other stuff were the villages. I understand on the NES, your color palette, memory limitations. Um, didn't lend itself to a lot of diversity, but my god, the towns were so boring. It was kind of hard to uh, realize which town I was in. Um, the the whole overworld map, oh my god, the, the game could have used an overworld map. I don't know if they could have squeezed it in there, but that was confusing. Even if I had a walkthrough that told me go to this town, go to that place by name of location, I had very little idea where everything was in relation to everything else. So that really dampened my experience with it. Um, but otherwise, I think I've covered most of the major elements of Castlevania II Simon's Quest. Uh, it was it was a nice surprise. Maybe I enjoyed it more because my expectations were just so low versus a lot of people played this after playing the first one and probably were expecting more of that. And that was like the only thing that you knew that was Castlevania back then. So I can see Castlevania II being a big letdown and having like a lot of frustration, frustrating part. It was like an entirely different game. Um, but I like this direction, and I think merging Castlevania 2 elements with Castlevania 1 elements can really lead to a much better game. And I'm really looking forward to like seeing the rest of the franchise. I know a lot of you who played Castlevania, you're like, oh, you're probably saying, well, this game does it. I'm hearing a lot of Symphony of the Night was inspired heavily by Simon's Quests and kind of took elements. So if that game really did what I'm wanting it to do, I'm really looking forward to playing that. Otherwise, uh, I think that's everything. Everything I want to cover. Yep. So, yeah. So stay tuned for my next uh, Castlevania Diary entry, which will be on Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. I'll see you next time. And until then, keep it classy.